Coming up on Network Africa. Liberia's election hit by fraud claims as citizens patiently await results of the concluded polls. Kenya government bans demonstrations in the central business district of three major cities, Nairobi, Mombasa and the opposition stronghold of Kisumu. And the Democratic Republic of Congo elections delayed to hold in April 2019. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Millicent from Walker. We'll begin with the just concluded elections in Liberia where citizens are hoping that violence will not break out after the results are announced. This comes after a leading political party in the country called for a halt in announcing the results of Tuesday's presidential election. In a statement, the Liberal Party said it was deeply troubled by the discovery of irregularities and fraud in the elections, threatening the National Elections Commission neck with legal action. Meanwhile, NEC says that it was unaware of the party's complaint. Charles Bruskine of the Liberal Party is one of the contenders to succeed Africa's first elected female president, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. Correspondents say that irregularities would taint the country's first democratic transfer of power in more than 70 years, as the first official results are being expected later today. And joining us now is a public affairs analyst, Mr. Yinka Oyeniji. Good to have you back on Network Africa. Oh, yes, my pleasure all the time. All right, now, one of Liberia's leading political parties calling for a halt in announcing uh, the results has talked about irregularities and fraud. What do you make of these allegations? Oh, well, I think that uh, that ship has since sailed, all right? Uh, but it is not unusual to have at times like this. You have uh, various contenders coming up with last-minute um, uh, would I say uh, red herring, trying to uh, distract and divert um, attention from the process for Liberians, for Nigerians, in fact, for every other part of Africa and the rest of the world, it is important to have a smooth transfer from one democratically elected government to the other. They've not been here in the last 70 years, so no one would at this point, all right, if violence hasn't broken out till today, when the elections are concluded, nobody is going to waste any time considering that. Good to know that that political party has said that it will take legal actions, all right? So go to court, all right, air your grievances, but nothing will stop this result from being announced. It's interesting to know that the electoral body has until October the 25th to declare a winner mm. or announce a runoff for the presidency. Mm. But do you foresee this happening? Oh, yes. For me, uh, I do know a lot of people, and uh, I, I had uh, taken to my own Facebook account earlier in the day to advise people to desist from announcing George Weah as president already. The results have not yet been properly collated and comprehensively counted. All right, so for me, for those who are keen watchers of elections and the trend in that country, there's definitely going to be a runoff. It's almost impossible for 20 aspirants, all right, jostling for about 2.1 million votes to go ahead and think that at the first ballot, a clear winner would be mad. No, at the last time Sirleaf contested and were contested against her, there was a runoff, all right? And this time, I don't think it is going to be any different, especially because there are some centers that results have been quarantined at. There's a very high sense of likelihood that elections may be conducted again in some other parts. So a runoff is more likely than getting an announcement of a winner today. But one would also say Sirleaf, Erlene Johnson Sirleaf, isn't running. So George, we're against who, if you're talking about... Oh, well, winner. again, uh, <laughs> it's very interesting. All right, I took my time again to examine almost all the 20 aspirants, all right? George Ware's ex-girlfriend is contesting. George Ware is contesting with uh, uh, the ex-president's wife, Charles Taylor's wife, all right? We have uh, Prince Johnson, who was a rebel leader, who is also contesting. Now, we have the present sitting vice president, who is also contesting, but it looks like a straight battle between George Ware and the present vice president. However, the present vice president does not enjoy so much popularity against George Ware. George Ware has youthfulness going for him, at 51, all right? He doesn't sleep in public functions. We are told that the present vice president takes naps 
in public functions. And the youths of that country are asking for education. They are asking for change. They are also asking for basic amenities, including electricity. I don't think they will take a chance with the vice president, who has also been there for a considerable period of time. Sally has spent two terms of six years each. So everybody is waiting for something new to happen. That something new won't be the sitting vice president. In my own opinion, the something new will be George Ware, whose word are claimed. You can say he's standing against weak opponents at this time, but he has everything going for him. But as you've said, and also the National you know, Electoral Commission has said that until 5 p.m. today, that will be Liberian time before uh, they announce uh, you know, the results. It's Liberia's first democratic transfer of power in a long time. Mm. Uh, do you see a smooth transition, and would this in any way truncate the democratic process? There's, there's no doubt that there will be a smooth transition. Nigeria was here. Nigeria surpassed it and passed it. At this time, the world waits on Liberia. As a matter of fact, international agencies for the first time have also chosen to stay away from the democratic process. So no stone is left unturned to ensure that there will be a small transfer of power from a democratically elected president to another. Someone it, would say, some people would say Kenya is in particularly encouraging. <laughs> It's not only Kenya, Kenya, Guinea, Zimbabwe, we have it like that. But again, you want to look up at the trend going up, all right? You want to look at Nigeria in 2015, okay, as a source of inspiration. The same way you want Liberia to follow suit, all right? Nigeria was able to tackle Ebola, all right? Uh, Liberia also was able to tackle Ebola. The woman brought stability. So there's no need going backwards. There's no way there will be any going backwards this time around. All right, uh, final question. A lot of neighboring countries uh, want to see how the Liberian experiment will indeed work out. But uh, for the incoming leader, what do you think he should address? All right, whoever comes in, uh, I'm a football fan, okay? I follow Chelsea Football Club, all right? Uh, I'm told George Wade has played for Chelsea before. But we know that he is a former football, World Footballer of the Year, the only African to have achieved that feat. All right? He's also won African Footballer of the Year back to back for a couple of times. So it's a new trend. Honestly, even though we, as Nigerians, we consider that we have no interest in what is happening in Liberia. But at 51, it's probably going to be one of the youngest presidents that Africa will produce. And that is if it is where. But if it's someone else, what do you think oh, they well, should address if, if it for is, the Liberian people? Thank you, okay, for bringing me back to the question. If it's somebody else, OK, I think I also went with the ecstasy of George Ware. If it's somebody else, the person has to start building fences again, has to start mending fences again, all right? The, the country is polarized. There's no doubt about that. 20 individuals contesting presidency, that's a lot. All right, so that person has to reach out to the other groups. They need to build on the foundation that Selim has already laid. All right, Liberia cannot easily access so much of uh, international funding at this time. Even when it does, it is not enough. It has power problems, it has infrastructure problems, and it has problems of also building leaders for the future. I was, I was at a forum about two weeks back with a representative of Liberia, especially in Qatar, Doha, talking about uh, World Tourism Day. And he came there. He couldn't even expose on tourism potentials of Liberia. He was talking about genital mutilation and all of that. So that country needs a clear path to growth, to harmonize its citizens, and then start building on the achievements of peace and harmony, which Salif, as the first female president in Africa, has laid. It's always a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much, Mr. Yinka Oyeniti for I'm coming on the program. I'm so grateful. Thank you for having me.